Welcome back to Crew. Crew Welcome. stands for. Uh, <laughs> we're happy to be back, as you can tell. <laughs> Crew stands for Christians Rising Up. I'm Yvetta. My name is Fonzo. And we're so glad to be um, on YouTube again today to give you some words of encouragement, to tell you a little bit more about what the Bible says, what God says, to give you some hope and some help into your life. We want to just do a couple of shout outs. We want to shout out Mr. Jeremiah. We know y'all missed him. We missed you, man. <laughs> where you at? Josh, Fab, where y'all at? Yeah, pray for them. <laughs> um, they had a little COVID scare, so pray for Josh and Fab. Also, want to shout out to Bia and yes. um, Miss Stevens, and we're just glad that, that all of you are okay. And if you haven't heard from one of us yet, um, one of the teachers, Miss Valenta, Miss Sandra, um, Fonzo, Nate, if you haven't heard from anyone yet, then um, feel free to give us a call here at the church and so we can find out how you're doing. Um, so the church number here is 407-293-4277 because we really want to make sure that we're in contact with you throughout all that's going on in this crazy world and this it crazy is. 2020. But we want to see you um, and we want to see you on um, campus. If you're able to come on Sunday, we are here worshiping all together as one family in the sanctuary. Uh, we have not resumed our crew sessions yet, but we're praying that we will soon. Soon, soon, <laughs> soon. Be ready. Let's go ahead and jump into our lesson. Let's start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for today and the ability to learn more about you, God, to increase our wisdom and our understanding and our knowledge of you, God. Help us to turn away from everything that is not like you. We just ask you right now, God, to forgive us for our sins, wash us and cleanse us, and help us, God, to live a life that's right. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So the topic of today is what to do when you don't know what to do. And the breakdown of this is a question that I want to open up with. What is your favorite movie? What is your favorite story, your favorite book? I can speak for myself, and it's Spider-Man. Because he has a, a, a storyline that's like no other. It, it's incredible how he comes from a young age, doesn't have a real identity with himself, and he becomes a superhero, and he has to balance the lifestyle of a hero and a human being. And I, I, I want you guys to think about that, hold that in your thoughts, because Spider-Man, he had to literally go through this obstacle of dealing with the uncle that passed away who, who was his rock who was his foundation and having to save other people knowing that he has to deal with this thing called life like we all deal with, mm -hmm. right? So I, I want you guys to understand that, that, that the, the, the producers create stories for us to, to hold on to that make us feel different, make us feel, man, I, I can't even understand this character, but I love him so much. Mm -hmm. And he goes through all these obstacles and we're gonna talk about Joseph, just like how we talked about it last week on how he kind of had the same backstory. He, he had the same issues, he had the same dilemmas, but yet we can understand and we can um, relate to it. I like, I like Spider-Man too. I mean, I like the way in most of the Spider-Man movies, they like tell you his backstory, you know, and it kind of explains why he has some issues in the future because of his backstory, you know, like yes. him with Mary, um, Mary Jane, Mary Jane yeah. right? You know, how he's always kind of pushing her away. And the backstory is, is because the villains always would come, come after, after her, her. Yep. you know what I mean? And so you don't really know sometimes why he's pushing her away until you realize, oh, it's because he's trying to save, save her. her, you know? So that's like his love for her is causing him to push her, um, push her back, push her away. Yeah. Yes. So like chances are, um, you've also kind of felt this way in living your own life. That there's some backstory uh, that you're experiencing right now. That's your current story, yep. and you're trying to figure out how it's going to really fit for fit. your Yeah, whole how it's going to make sense. Yeah. So like COVID, yeah. we're we're all going through that as a family. That that we're going through that COVID racism. We're going through these kind of obstacles together. But all of us have this individual walk that we're walking. This backstory that we're not fully understanding and grasping. And, and we're going to highlight that today with this story that we have here. Yeah, even in like, you know, maybe asking yourself, like, why is this happening? Or, well, you know, some of the things that you may not even realize that is a, a symptom of the pain and the problems of like COVID, like you said, because now that we have COVID, we're stuck in our houses. So you may be feeling some loneliness yep. that you didn't realize, you know, that you were really missing being around people and yes. going to their birthday parties. Isolation. And being able to hang out in the cafeteria and school stopped so early and you weren't able to do all the other like spring plays. And so now you're kind of feeling isolated and lonely and 
a lot of things are being canceled and you can't go to the movies. I like really normally yeah. go <laughs> to the movies. <laughs> like, I'm almost willing to like, mask up and take a Lysol can just so I can go to the movies. Um, but with that, those cancellations and the loneliness, and a lot of questions are being asked. Like, why is this happening? Why is it this bad? Like, it hasn't been a uh, pandemic this bad, like they said, for like over 100 years. So why in our lifetime, what's the backstory or that's going to help with our current story and our future story? And oftentimes, like, we go through these random, we feel like it's random. We, we feel like it's pointless. Like, why are we going through this? It's unnecessary. But God has this, this all figured out for us. And we're going to really highlight and talk about the backstory because mm -hmm. we don't know while we're in the midst of it. Spider-Man, he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Joseph doesn't know. But the only person that knows is God himself. So we're going to kind of break this down for you guys. It's kind of like your coach that wants you to run those extra laps. Yes. Do more suicide. Oh, you no. Know? <laughs> and you're just like, what is the purpose of this? But then when you're in the game, you realize, man, that's really helping me endure. That's yep. really helping me run up and down the court like 50 times in order to stay with the ball. You know, yep. so certain things happen um, and they may be painful. You know what I mean? Losing a friend that dies could be painful. Yes, and, yes. Um, experience then loss and your, your parents' divorce, it could be very painful. And you were under like nothing good, good. Could come could, out of that. Yeah. And God is like sitting on his throne and he has a plan. And so we're going to talk about Joseph's um, life and what God's plan for Joseph's life was. And I, I want you guys to understand that Joseph is a different person. He's not like anybody we've seen because the story that we've mentioned in our previous videos and how he was the, the smallest, but yet he was gifted with cer certain items, but then got um, betrayed by his brothers. It's, it's, not, it's not glorified enough because of the, the past, but we'll deep into his, his future that will kind of open your eyes on our backstory. So we're going to pick up here in Genesis chapter 40. And so um, the last video, we were in Genesis 37, and we learned about how when Joseph was born, how he was the favorite child of his, uh, his father. Yep. And some things that's happened, actually, between those verses and where we are right now. Um, so Joseph was with his, his father and his 10 brothers who all hated him. Um, and they hated him so much that they basically sold him off to slavery in Egypt. Flesh and blood. Yeah. They really did. And so they told the father that he was eaten by a wild animal and they put some blood on his coat and they took the coat back to the father. So the father thinks he's dead. And the brothers are um, pretending like he's dead, but they know that they have sold him off to slavery. He's moved into um, Egypt and he got a job working in this, um, like, like an official's kind of a governor kind of yep. position house. And the wife falsely accused him of trying to rape her, and so he was thrown into prison. Falsely accused, let's keep that in mind. Right, and he basically had to run from his life, get away from the guy, but he was caught and he was put into prison. So at this particular point, again, we're in Genesis. Genesis is the first book of the Bible, chapter yes. 40. <laughs> and we're gonna start at first verse and read down to the third verse. And it says, sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the same prison where Joseph was confined. So here we have these two guys that used to serve the king. The well trusted. Well trusted, yeah. Because yep. if you're a chief cupbearer, what that basically means is, is that when the chief, when the pharaoh is ready to drink something, the <laughs> the chief cupbearer takes the cup and tastes it for poison first. Back in the day. <laughs> before giving it to the Pharaoh, the king, to make sure that he's not poisoned. So that's how trusted this man was, and this is how close he was to the king all the time. And the same thing was true for the chief baker. This is the person that was making all the meals, cooking all the food, and then making sure that no one's, like, poisoned the king. And so these two guys were well trusted, but for some reason they fell out with the king, and the king put them in prison the same prison where Joseph was currently uh, being held for something he didn't do. So let's continue to read. The story continues here. It says in verse four, after they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who are being held in prison, had a dream the same night. And each dream had a meaning of its own. 
When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So again, he was in prison and he continues to honor God because he says here, man, your dreams came from God. Right. Why don't you tell them to me and I'll help you interpret them. And they didn't notice, they didn't come to Joseph. Joseph came to them. So he's still being obedient. Mm -hmm. He's still listening. Mm -hmm. He's not shut down. He's not, oh man, I'm in prison. Why is this happening to me? He's, he's still listening to what God is telling him. He's still willing to help someone else. Yes. Even in his bad place. I mean, this man is locked up for something he didn't do, but he's still willing to help them. He asked them why were they so dejected, which means why are you looking so upset today? You know, so clearly he wasn't looking upset, you know, and he had every right to be upset because he was falsely accused. And so he actually interprets their dreams. Breaks it down. <laughs> complete accuracy, you know, um, something of which they could get no one else to do. And with that being said, the cupbearer tells the, the, the Pharaoh of the breakdown of what Joseph told him. Yeah, so he gets out first. He gets out first. Yeah, and he gets back into his same position, right back in, in next <laughs> to, the Pharaoh, to the Pharaoh, right next to the king of Egypt. And he doesn't say anything. He does not tell about Joseph. So now Joseph is sitting here, and I just helped you out. I would have thought you were yeah. going to help me out, mm -hmm. but I'm, yet I'm still stuck in prison. Yeah, because even the Bible, as you read the scriptures, it says that how they had an agreement, like, hey, remember me when you get out. And he didn't. He was not remembered. And it, actually, he was there for two more years. Not two, one, but two. <laughs> two more years before Pharaoh started having dreams that no one could interpret. And that's when the cupbearer remembered, oh, it's this guy. Yeah, that wasn't I met. Really me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that can interpret your dreams. And notice he was still, again, Joseph was still willing mm -hmm. to listen and to break down mm -hmm. what God has been telling him. Yeah. So this was another, this is his opportunity to be hurt. Um, even though this guy did him wrong, you know, went on with his life. Um, and it, again, it's an opportunity for Joseph to say like, what's the point? You know, like, I helped somebody else out and they were supposed to help me and they let me down, you know, his family had let him down at this point. Somebody, other people, people that, he, that had, he Yeah, people that he knew messed right. him up. Mm -hmm. Then people that he don't know messed him up. So he's still fighting, but yet he's still giving his best. And once the cupbearer remembered him and the Pharaoh went to go talk to him about his dream, mm -hmm. he got it again with accuracy. Right. So that that right. that 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 balance of you still in prison for two years is no longer there, because mm. now he's gained the trust of not just the cupbearer but mm -hmm. the, the highest. Right, right. And with that came promotion. Yes. So with that, the then Pharaoh made Joseph second in command. So it's like he made him vice president, like of the know, entire Egypt. Egypt. And at this time, Egypt was a flourishing, um, beautiful, majestic rich area, mm -hmm. you know, and so, and some of the things that was the interpretation in that dream uh, was that to help Egypt to make it through famine. Yes. Um, and so- That was, was the, that was the dream. Right. That there he didn't really seven understand. Years yep. of plenty and seven years of famine. So the seven years of plenty, Joseph had enough wisdom from God um, to so tell them save. to save back and keep when we have all this plenty because there's famine coming. Yep. And that famine that n not only hit Egypt, but hit uh, every um, surrounding yep. areas. Where his family was at. Is gonna be our next <laughs> video. So you have to wait and see what happens with that. But also with, with his backstory, who would have knew? Right. Who would have knew right. that he would be sitting in second in command mm -hmm. after being in prison? Doing, being in a place where he didn't even, he wasn't even supposed to be at, mm -hmm. but yet he's second in command. The backstory we gotta, we gotta dig into that. Yeah. So, who would have known something so horrible could position him for something so great? Who would have known something that's in your life that you may be thinking is so horrible right now that's un even unbearable right now, but that could be positioning you for something great? There may be some purpose to your pain yeah. right now. And I'm not saying that you have to endure undue pain, but I'm just saying is to keep your eyes on God during this time. Um, and we also, we also, we also got to remember that just because these things are like happening, like why me? 
why is this always happening to me? Why do I feel like this? Why, why is it like, why God? We, we get those questions, but it's, it's not only the, the fact that it's happening to you, but what are you learning from it? What are you getting out of it? Cause we, we, we forget that, yeah, there is sin in this world, but what can we learn from this? Mm -hmm. Joseph, Joseph really, really continued to learn even though people were doing him wrong. He, he still knew that there's something more to this. Mm -hmm. right. Prison is not the end. Right. This is a plan that God has set aside for me, for my purpose. How about if he just continued to just, just shut down? Mm -hmm. Would he have been in second in command? Mm -hmm. if, if you shut down, would people want to listen to what you have to say or how you feel? So we got to get that understanding of not being that person that shuts down when problems come, right. but speak up on it. Right. Be purposeful, be, be led by a plan. So that's what we're kind of trying to focusing on right now. Right. And it is so important as you watch the next video that will be coming out soon, that this isn't even the end of his story. <laughs> we haven't even got to the good part yet. This is really great that he's out of prison, he's second in command, but there's even more for him. What we also want you to remember for your own life is another scripture. It's Romans 8 and 28. And the NIV version says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Yes, amen. That's so why I said there, there, there can be purpose in your pain right now. All you can, things. You can be positioning <laughs> right now for something that is very purposeful and preparing you for something even greater. So when you don't know what to do, remember that your problems can position you for a purpose. And we just wanna give you guys these key facts that you guys have to hone in on, especially for this topic right here, when you don't know what to do. Um, the first thing is to remember that no one else has your story. Mm -hmm. No one no one has your story. The person that you feel like, ah, oh, they might not understand, there's a reason why they may not understand that you can tell them, hey, like, I'm different, I'm unique, I'm not going through this by myself, but God understands me, but I, I'm set apart. Right. There's no one that there's no one that can tell me, oh, I'm going through this and you're not supposed to go through this. I'm unique. Right. Right. And so your present is unique and your future is unique. What God has for you, he has made uniquely for you to accomplish. So that's point number one. Remember that no one else has your life story. And point number two is remember that your story can re interact with others. It was, Joseph was not only about himself when he was in prison. He was not only about himself when he got out of prison with Pharaoh. And, and we'll see in the future, in the next part of his story, that he wasn't only about himself. So your drama that you're experiencing right now, your pain is not just about you. It's a testimony that so that can help someone else. There are a lot of things that I've been in my been through in my life. And some of you have heard some of my story, and I told you that <laughs> in the, the PG-rated version <laughs> uh, in our sessions before, some of you, I told you, I've, I spilled the tea and I've told you some of the things I went through, yep. but I wouldn't have had that testimony if I had not gone through that pain and that purpose. So there's a testimony that's coming out of this test for you. This yep. may be a test. This may be um, purpose or plan for God. This may be because sin is in the world, but no Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together for your good because you're called things. about his purpose and that you love God. So whatever it is, remember that you, no one else has your life story. And remember that your story is that to help you interact with others. And just keep in mind, we, 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 we live in a world where everything is impossible, but, but God operates in the possible. So you can put it on him. He will, he will be able to handle the things that you call your backstory, the things that you question about. Don't be afraid or, or shut down on God because God will always be there to help us and right. cover us, yeah. just like he did with Joseph while he was in prison. So we got to keep that in mind. So what if God is using this painful situation yes. to position you for something amazing in your life? What if God, think about maybe whatever you're going through right now, what you feel like is hurting you, what you're feeling like maybe would never end, overthinking, and depressed. Whatever it may be, this will one day be a part of your backstory. It's meant to be a part of your testimony. You will overcome it. And most of the time, the only way that, I, well, all of the time, the way I overcome it is with the help of God. Amen. And so we wanna pray with you and that you ask for that help from God too. Your parents can help, your friends can help, but God is the only one who's there all the time. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yep. So let's go to God in prayer. All right, just focus on, on, a, on a thing that's causing you to question things. Focus on the thing that's causing you the most trouble. 
Focus on the things that you want to, to walk in. Focus on your backstory, asking reasons on what can you do to understand it better. And just focus on that as we pray together. All right, so all eyes closed, head bowed. Heavenly Father, God, we draw on to you, oh Father God. We ask you right now to activate us, oh Father God. Give us a, the right flow, oh Father God. We wanna understand you more, oh Father God. We wanna understand our backstory just like Joseph had, oh Father God. We wanna insight on you, oh Father God. We wanna resemble like you are, oh Father God. Even through this tough time, oh Father God, the ups and downs, oh Father God, from the valley to the mountaintop, oh Father God. We, we wanna put our trust in you, oh Father God, not on mankind. Mankind has failed us countless and countless times, but you have never failed us, oh Father God. You are victorious, oh Father God. So we thank you for allowing us to connect over video, oh Father God, over YouTube, oh Father God. We thank you right now, Father God, that you tap into us like no other, oh Father God. In your mighty and matchless name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah, amen. thank you, Jesus. All right, we've enjoyed this time with you, <laughs> and we can't wait to see you again. In the next video. <laughs> have a great one. <laughs> We love, love you guys. You.